teacher Sandra Inés Trujillo Juarez uh, comes from Escuela Normal Oficial de Irapuato, Area de Idiomas. And she will be presenting today. Be ready to blend, flip, and fly. Thank you very much for um, being with us today, and we welcome you to CIFEL. Okay, thank you very much for being here to this presentation today about a blend, be ready to blend, flip, and fly. That is some things that we really need to know right now to prepare excellent classes, right, when we teach. I'm here, uh, well, in 2008, 13 years ago, the book Disrupting Class predicted that in 2019, half of all high school courses would be online. That was 13 years ago in this book, Disrupting Class, and he predicted half of all the high school courses would be online. And what a surprise that by 2020, much more than half of the courses are online. Yes, that, that was something really unexpected, but real. Blended learning traditionally was known as the combination of classroom learning and online learning. It was a, like a mixture and that was a traditional blending. It was very popular. They even developed different models for blending, like this one face-to-face -face driver that the, most of the activities were covered face-to-face, -face, but some of the activities were covered in a laboratory. Here we have rotation with some schedules for activities that are uh, all together in face to face with activities that are online in fixed schedules. Flex model was all the content in an LMS platform. Online laboratory is uh, all the learning through a platform, but uh, in the same facility of the school. Yeah, uh, self-blend is when students have all the subjects, but they can choose some of their subjects to be blended, to be online, and they choose them. An online driver is most of the instruction is online, and some of the class of the lessons are with a teacher, only some of them, or with a mentoring or tutoring of a teacher, so uh, like assistants. All the models of blended learning were tried in many prestigious universities in the United States very successfully, very, very successfully. And because of that, well, blended learning has been spread all over the places in the world, and it is very common, mostly in university. But nowadays, with this instruction that we have right now in, with virtuality because of the lockdown, it is more common than ever. It has many advantages. And as I was telling you, it, it get, gives really good results from before the lockdown, before when face-to-face -face instruction was very common and without any problem, this was giving more better results than traditional instruction. So it is worth analyzing and getting to know how it is done. Uh, the advantages of blended learning instruction is that you can connect with a diversity of learners and it is more accessible and efficient. It employs a greater variety of learning strategies and it encourages independence and responsibility. So it has many advantages. So with, as we said, Previously, before blended instruction was a combination of face-to-face -face and online or distance activities with the teacher's feedback. And now the model is different. The model is the blending is synchronous activities with asynchronous activities and the teacher's feedback to do this blended instruction online. Then we have here the synchronous activities. Synchronous activities are the ones that we do at the same time. All of us together, like in a class, uh, here traditionally face-to-face. -face. But nowadays that we are not face-to-face -face because of the lockdown, we are together through these video conference platforms, such as Zoom, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, Cisco WebEx, like today, right now. And we are all together doing the same activities at the same time. That is. Synchronous. Synchronous means at the same time. Asynchronous activities, on the other hand, are not at the same time. We are in different places and we are working at the time that we prefer. 
each of us. And for asynchronous activities, it's really recommended to have an LMS, a learning management system. Uh, it could be like difficult to believe, but there are many teachers who don't use LMS. They are still asking for content and homework and things through through the telephone or maybe through the email, through the email or through WhatsApp. And this is a mess. Imagine you have 80 students from different courses and all the tasks get, all, all the emails get uh, mixed. All of them, even if you had one special email pair group, imagine that you did that. Uh, anyways, it would be very different, be very difficult to keep track of all the activities that you are sending and all the activities that you are receiving. And with these asynchronous activities, well, uh, these platforms, you can do many things. They are very convenient and very easy to use. Here are some examples like this one, Google Classroom, Edmodo, Schoology, Canvas, Nearpod, Blackboard, Moodle, and there are many others. Okay, so with them, we can share information with our students that can be audio, video, pictures, math, graphs, charts, or Word, Excel, PDFs, PowerPoints, or links for the activities that they can do among other things, okay? We can share our lesson materials and activities with other teachers. If we work in a very nice community of teachers, there are many things that we can do together to plan the same course that we share. Or maybe you plan one, you design one, and I design another, and then we share because we are going to be working with the same material. So it is very easy whatsoever you create here in this on this LMS can be reused and shared. You create collaborative tasks and foster pair work or teamwork. You evaluate all the tasks and have score log instantly. You program all the activities to be assigned on a future date. You reuse all what you do in similar classes or courses. You keep communication, reminders, schedules, due date, etc. And you keep all the work evident, perfectly organized by student and by course, and nothing gets lost. It is not that, no, teacher, si te lo mande. No, 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 it's not like that. I mean, here you have the evidence in the elements and that uh, the, even with the time, the day and time that you receive those evidences and nothing gets lost, you can check everything is going to be there like forever, okay? Then you can have a calendar that will remind the students about the due dates and there is no printing needed at all. This is fantastic. Blended learning. Flipped class and hybrid learning are perfectly managed and well organized in these platforms. Students will have everything they need in the same place, exercises, materials, activities, etc. And half the students can catch up autonomously. Everything is going to be there. Grading and feedback can be done there on any device like smartphones, tablets, laptops, etc. So if you are on the queue of the bank or at the waiting room of the doctor, you can be checking and grading the student's homework on your telephone. This is very convenient and they are very easy to use. Okay, so if you don't use an LMS platform, try one of these ones right now because it is not possible to keep on using just emails and WhatsApps. Okay, uh, here we have a video tutorial. Uh, oh, at the end of the presentation, I am going to share all the presentation with you. All the presentation is full of links, very useful links to the video tutorials of all the resources that we are going to be talking about right now. So this is a video tutorial of Google Classroom. That is the one that I use because of my institution. But it is step by step with very short videos and it has all the information that you would need to start using it. OK, now. So as we said, there are differences between synchronous activities and asynchronous activities, and they generate different learning. Synchronous learning is at the same time all together in this video conference platforms, and asynchronous is everybody at different times at different places. In synchronous learning, your students access content as the one that you administer at that time, and in asynchronous, they can administer the content every time. Uh, synchronous altogether, you control the pace and the time that you have all the activities. In asynchronous, students can control their pace and time. 
But there are some students that are very fast finishers. So this is very convenient for them because they can work fast, work fast and they don't have to wait for anybody. And uh, if the other, on the other hand, there are students who need more time for doing the activities. So here they can take their time for doing the activities without having the fast finishers finishing or giving the answers before they have finished. Okay, so this is very convenient. And uh, also in synchronous learning, well, the teacher is there, but in asynchronous learning, maybe students have to get face their questions or doubts uh, on their own. Or maybe they can text you if you deliver, if you assign a time, a schedule for them to text you through WhatsApp or, or email if they have a question, you know, what is the key for avoiding questions? The key for avoiding questions is that your instructions are clear, really, really clear, simple and clear. So you have to become an expert to give a very clear instructions in all the activities that you assign. So you don't have a bunch of questions then from your students, okay? So a good instruction avoids a thousand questions. Here we have a list of asynchronous learning activities. So they are very good for them to do them at home alone. Reading and taking notes, watching video-based instruction, listening to podcasts, explore teacher-curated resources, engage in online discussions, practice and review, research and explore, and reflect and document learning. Why are these asynchronous learning activities so important? Remember, they foster autonomy in students. They generate deep learning if we really design good activities or, or assign good content. But they are also very important in these times. Uh, blended instruction, remember, includes some time alone, some time alone and some time together. Meaning that, for example, if you have five lessons a week, at least two of those lessons are going to take time alone right, with the asynchronous activities and only three of these lessons are going to be together. So this is blended learning. The objective of this is that students do this kind of activities alone and then when we are together we do different activities that are less time consuming and, and more interactive. So that's why the difference between asynchronous activities and the others that we are going to see. So asynchronous, remember it means different time. Asynchronous learning provides students with a high degree of flexibility and autonomy, and they can control the pace of their learning. With asynchronous activities, well, they can include a wide variety of resources different than the book and workbook. Commonly in our face-to-face -face courses, we have a book and a workbook and the course material that are the audios of the course of the course and some videos if you are lucky or some CD ROMs or well now they are LMS. Uh, but anyways, here with these asynchronous activities, you can have some more freedom to choose the content that you are going to use. And you're not going to have the problems that you have in your face-to-face -face classroom because in your face-to-face -face classroom, commonly you don't have internet. And now here you can assign all the activities that you have always dreamed on assigning because students are at home and they are supposed to have internet. So you can assign many other things differently that different than the book and the workbook. We can also think of the asynchronous learning as pre-work and post-work for the synchronous sessions, okay? So they complement perfectly, but there is a time for these special asynchronous activities. And when we are together, we do different things, okay? This is, uh, for example, do we have here these examples of uh, synchronous learning activities. This is to build community and relationships, taking advantage that we are together. They lead interactive modeling sections uh, to differentiate instruction for small groups, personalized instructions, and what provide one-to-one -one coaching to guide practice and application to facilitate real-time conversations, foster collaboration among students, and real-time feedback on work in progress. So this is different, okay, than the asynchronous. 
So synchronous are all together. They are used live with students participating at the same time and they are typically from different places or maybe in a hybrid way, maybe in a hybrid way, we're going to talk about it. Okay, the biggest advantage of synchronous le learning is the human connection. So this is not the moment for doing a reading. This is not the moment for doing a listening exercise or maybe grammar lecturing. No, let's take advantage of this time that we are connected at the same time for human connection and interactions. When students learn in a short time and space, they have access to their teacher and to each other. The live sections reduce social isolation and provide immediate help, allow people to learn from each other develop classroom activities that promote active learning. The activities that we are going to use here for this synchronous time have to promote active learning. Students have to get involved. Students should be applying the knowledge that they gain from the prior asynchronous, asynchronous activities, okay? So they do asynchronous activities before class, and then uh, they, they come to class with all their previous knowledge. And then with that previous knowledge, we do different activities, interaction activities, many things that, that, that do you ask them to do to participate and to interact with each other. Here we have the hybrid learning. Hybrid learning is different and it is, many people are talking about this right now. This is live instruction with a combination of some students online while others are face to face. So you're going to have a hybrid classroom. And many teachers are terrified right now when listening to this, that, oh, vamos a volver al modelo híbrido. O sea, si de por sí, working online, I live my life there. Now imagine if I have face-to-face -face students and online students. Well, you don't have to do the two things separately. You have to do the two things together. The two things together, you have to manage, you have to see a way to look for a way where that you can have connections. Schools have to activate like this. So you can have some students at home about the, at the same time that you have the students face to face. The transmission of, of classes live at least through YouTube. You, you can do a, a, a live transmission through Facebook or I don't know. Uh, if you don't have like a good, a very, very good internet, well, maybe just with the telephone, but you don't have to work like the double thing. No, with hybrid learning, students who are at home are going to be getting like the participation online, but the same activities that we're having in the classroom. And then you have to design very good activities for fostering that interaction with some of the tools that we're going to cover here in this workshop, okay? So to be effective, it should include blended learning. Remember, not the five lessons of the week are going to be synchronous, no. I mean, only three of them are going to be live and the other time is going to be for asynchronous activities. Uh, and uh, uh, this is blended learning. And flipped classroom activities. Split classroom strategies are different. We are going to cover them. Flipped classroom strategies uh, are going to tell us which activities are good for asynchronous time and which activities are good for class time, okay? So this is to flip the classroom. To develop synchronous and asynchronous activities and learning, okay? So I have here my best wishes list. This best wishes list can be got right now that we are remotely teaching or hybridly teaching or blended uh, teaching, okay? I want my students to do more high order thinking and to be creative. I want to teach problem solving, critical thinking and collaboration. I also want to challenge the higher achieving students or go deeper, to go deeper without at the same time ignoring or discouraging the lower achieving students. I can challenge the higher and, and I can deal with the lower achieving students at the same time. I want to support students at their pace while still meeting all the required standards. So you're going to have time. If you really know how to develop these asynchronous activities, then in class you're going to have time for other activities. And I want to encourage students to guide their own learning and I want to create a personalized learning environment for each student so all of the students could grow 
and develop the best of their abilities. This is the best wishes list that you are going to get if you can master these techniques and strategies that we are going to cover right now. At the end of the presentation, you're going to take all the information, okay, with you. Flip classroom, the popular definition of flip classroom is to lecture at home and do homework at school. So that is the inversion, okay? That's why the flipping. The lecture is at home and the homework is at school. So a more formal definition by Cockrum says, using technology to deliver a synchronous and direct instruction with the intention of freeing up class time for student-centered learning. Okay, so let's see with that picture better. Traditional learning, well, this is a teacher and the teacher is giving class, yeah, delivering class and then the homework. In flipped instruction is different. In flipped instruction, the student works with the lectures before the class, before the class, through videos, readings, listening, vocabulary exercises, activities, for the asynchronous time. And then when we are together in the synchronous session, face-to-face -face, or uh, connected in the video conference platform, then we do other classroom activities, other different activities. We don't lecture, we don't deliver content, okay? So this is a traditional classroom uh, in the instructor prepares the material, the student lesson, and then homework is assigned. And then in the flipped classroom, the instructor records or shares lectures outside of class before class. And then when students come to the classroom, they already have the prior knowledge, okay? The class time is devoted to applied learning activities or higher order taking tasks, okay? So here are the links. If you want to go deeper through this information, I am going to share this with you. This is a more traditional picture that represents the flipped classroom. Uh, that, that is before the class, students learn, students do the knowledge and the understanding. And then during class, we do other interactive activities and then after class is like the wrap up and extension of that knowledge. Here it is. It is impossible not to talk about Bloom's taxonomy. In the traditional way, the base of the pyramid of the Bloom's taxonomy was done in the classroom. First, the teacher exposes students to content in class. That is knowledge and comprehension. In flipped classroom is different. In flipped classroom, this is done at home in an autonomous way. Students are exposed to that knowledge of the base of the pyramid, knowledge and comprehension at home. When students arrive to class in flipped classroom, then students are already prepared to work on teacher-guided activities, but at the highest level of the pyramid, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. The highest step of the pyramid can be got also through asynchronous activities again, but uh, you don't come to the base of the pyramid to the classroom, no. You do it, prior students do them with the activities that you decide. This is very important. This is what changes the way learning experiences are lived in this time. There are many advantages of flipped class. According to research, it's more efficient. It increases critical thinking. It can be based on real world problem solving approach. It reduces the achievement gaps and improves exam performance. It is, there are many studies that document this. In the practice, uh, this blended and flipped instruction, remember blended tell us that not all the lessons are going to be live, and flipped instruction tell us which activities can be done before, okay? So, and alone. So this helps students become more responsible for their learning. This is very important. It benefits busy students. They can do other things and doing their learning at the time, when they have time. It allows for individual interaction with students and it allows teachers to develop better relationships with students. It frees class time for active learning activities. It provides a student-centered learning environment and the teacher doesn't need to lecture or deliver content during class time. So again, we have the synchronous learning activities. They can be 
Uh, there's ones that we have here like writing, listening, reading comprehension, videos, grammar, vocabulary, exercises, journals, portfolio reflection, forum participation, and workbook. Uh, there are some examples of the things that students can do on their own in a very autonomous way, plus the instruction through readings or videos or exercises, okay? Prior practice before they come to class. Does it mean that I cannot do writing when we are all together? Yes, of course, you can do collaborative writing when we are together in a synchronous activity. Or peer correction to the writing, this is very good for students to do interaction and, and learn from other students or criticize or grade, even correct or give some feedback to their writing for, for of the other students, but just, these activities are not the ones that we are going to do in our class time that, okay, you have 10 minutes for this writing, no. Or you have uh, 20 minutes for this exercise, no. When we are together, we are going to do different things, okay, with our time, but because we are together. And we're going to see what we can do. Videos. These are two very valuable uh, websites that I am going to recommend to work with your videos. Uh, you can work with videos from YouTube, from uh, Vimeo, or videos that you record of yourself, your tutorials, or that you have videos that you have, you can upload them there in these two sites. They are for delivering students interactive videos with formative assessment and instant feedback. What does it mean? It means that you can put a video and with that video, you can make some pauses, pauses and the, in the pause, a question is going to pop out. So when the student is watching the video at home, he's going to find the questions popping out in the middle of the video and he has to answer the questions and he's going to receive immediate instant feedback on his answers. So he's going to be working at home but interactively, not only just watching the video, because sometimes this happens. We assign a video for homework, but we are not sure who watched the video. With these two sites, uh, the one that you prefer, you can have, you can keep track of your students. You create your class, you generate a code, and with the code, you are going to see if your students are working or not, how many times they watch the video, and what's the grade that they got with the questions. And you don't have to check them, you just have to put them there. But uh, when you tap the questions, which is very easy, and uh, you provide the correct answer to the, to the, to the site and then the students are going to receive that instant feedback of the videos that you deliver, okay? So uh, with this, you upload the videos, you crop the video, and then you can oh, you can also search the extensive library because they these have material uh, that other teachers have created. If you would like to use something that uh, is created by somebody else, you can, or you can create your own content and then you check your students progress and performance on the grade book everything is going to be there you just need to plan the video activity with the questions and that's it and that's it everything is checked automatically so here it says play pause it transform passive video viewing into active learning and here we have the possibility First, the video source, it can be from your video collection or you put a, a URL of the video that you like from the internet or upload a video from your own or only an MP3 for the audios, the exercises with audios, only the MP3, it's okay. Or, or you can record your videos, your tutorial immediately there directly in the platform, you can, okay, record and then you speak, you start speaking and then you work with that content or YouTube or Vimeo, okay? Then here it is an example, the video is reproducing. If you see at the bottom, you can see a, bra a blue bar with some white dots on it. Each white dot represents a pause, a pause in the video that you have programmed. Uh, the program pause has questions. So when the student is when students are reproducing the video, the questions are going to pop out like this example, and they just have to answer and submit, and then they are going to have the feedback, instant feedback of the activities. Okay, these are the possibilities: multiple choice, checkings, free response, fill in the blank, or poll, 
discussion and so you have also annotations uh, you can have links you can have templates you have templates for interactions vocabulary matching table contents and many others so you see the bar can be down okay so you need to explore it is very easy to use this play pose it or this as puzzle make any video your lesson for your videos for your instruction for asynchronous flipped classroom activities okay here i leave you two, two very good tutorials of each of them and with the presentation that you are going to take okay so if you choose the key video you give it your magic touch and track your students comprehension very easy Again, we have the asynchronous learning activities. We have already explored the possibilities for videos. Now, let's say here it says explore teacher curated resources. I'm going to tell you about this website. This is a website. You just type agendaweb.org. Agendaweb.org. I love it. I definitely love it. It is a bank. An endless bank of, of curated ESL resources organized by topic and by level. If you see here, it is grammar, vocabulary, verse, phonetic symbols, etc. Most of them give instant feedback. Most of them can be used on smartphones. So students can receive the link and answer the exercise on their phone and they just submit the screenshot, the screenshot with the grade. The, so you just Choose an exercise and uh, submit it to your students. Let me see if I can share here. Mm. Okay, I need to hide. Uh, here I type agendaweb.org. So I choose, for example, grammar exercises. And I am going to choose an exercise of florals, for example, florals. You see, you select the topic, and here it says elementary. If you give to the next page, it's intermediate or advanced. You choose, you open the exercise that you want and it is going to open like this. And then you are going to see chair, and then you choose chairs, dress, the plural of dress, dresses, dishes, bananas, watches. So from all the topics, you have thousands of exercises to choose from vocabulary, from grammar, from readings, you have listenings, you have videos, possibilities are endless. I finish and then I put check. Students, as I told you, can answer the exercises on their telephone. There are some that cannot be answered on a telephone, but you can choose the ones that can. So they answer the exercise that you just send this link, you copy the link from here, and then you send it to them so they can access. And they can take the screenshot that they are going to share with you as we said, as we saw here in the presentation, okay? So it is very useful, this agendaweb.org is a paradise, a paradise of exercises, automatically graded and very beautiful. The only thing they have to do is to open these possibilities and look for one. You see, it has audio stories, it has videos, it has songs, reading, listening, phonetic symbols. So you can get a lot of material here for these asynchronous activities okay asynchronous activities and it is self-checked it's paradise here we have now these live worksheets live worksheets are very useful this is a very useful tool for creative interactive worksheets and we have a variety of worksheets that are already created by other teachers that you can use and that you can access to them you can upload any page any document or chart or picture that you want and you can create different classes and workbooks for your students this is fantastic i mean you access to this live worksheets.com 
and and then you uh, create your free account as teacher. And then with your free account as teacher, then you create your classes, your groups, you generate a code for a class and your students log in and they can check on the content that you start delivering them and it is automatically evaluated. You can create your content or you can use content that is already created there. Uh, here it says, for example, my students, and I have 24 different pages of this workbook. You just assign the one page to a course and it goes to all the workbooks of all the students. And they just open here this page and they access to the exercises, they answer them and they receive the feedback immediately. You just check on the grades and that's all. Uh, here is a tutorial also. It is very easy as I'm telling you, you can create yours or you can use thousands of exercises that are already created there, but the administration of these resources by group and by class and by student and by workbook is excellent okay yes you create your digital workbooks but you don't have to check them you just choose the activities and assign them this is paradise here we have another possibility for vocabulary for working with vocabulary that is quizlet quizlet.com and the tutorial here it is uh, Quizlet is a place that I uh, personally adore. I use it for vocabulary, but you, you can use it for any subject. Because it says you have a question and an answer. That's it. It's a, it's a system of flashcards. And you just, on this column, you are going to write the concept. And in this case, in basic students, with basic students, I use English and Spanish. But in this case, I use English and definition. English and definition, okay? So uh, you can choose from definitions that they offer to you and from pictures that they offer to you. So you don't really need to be working like a lot. Here you put the concept and you type English. It's, they are going to ask you what's the language, okay? You put English. If you put Spanish here in this part of the column, they are going to offer you Spanish translations. Or if you work in another language, okay, French, they are going to offer you French translations. Or if you put here in this case, I put English here and English here. So it offers you definitions. If they are not the definitions that make you happy, then you can type yours. But it is very easy that you find the definitions already there and the suggestions of the picture. So you create your flashcards and this Quizlet offers you a lot of possibilities for working. As for example, here it is a sign. I can see it. This is my account. It's for free. Here, this is live. It's for playing. It's for playing. It's for competitions. Okay. When we are together in class, in the a synchronous class, then we can play. Students play with their telephones. These competitions after having practiced the vocabulary. Remember, practice comes first. Knowledge and understanding come first in the asynchronous activities. So you design your lesson like this one, as I'm telling you, you type the words and the concepts and the, the you, you choose the definition and the picture. And then the, 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 the site creates the flashcards, okay? So students can do this. Students can open this content on their telephones as well or on the computer. They can be practicing vocabulary wherever they go and it's free for us and it's free for them. And there are many exercises that we can do here here they choose, they, they offer you like, for example, well, here it says, he has a new design. Okay, well, you, you can explore the possibilities that you have. There was a change here. I, I have it in Spanish because I also teach technology in Spanish to my coworkers in Las Escuelas Normales de Guanajuato but uh, it's commonly I use it in English. Uh, here it says the definition and students have to choose the correct answer. And then it's the next and the next and the next program designed to make, uh, to assist them 
Yeah, so app. Yeah, and it gives feedback. A small useful machine or device, it's a gadget. Okay, so they just choose the correct answer with this aprender. Then we have features, we have probar. If you choose this text, students can get as many quizzes as they want with all the vocabulary list. Imagine that you have the list of the unit with 30 words, and here with Quizlet, you generate quizzes that you can print and better a PDF or that students can answer. Uh, you tell them just to try and try and try and test and test until, until they get a hundred in this and they send you the screenshots. They send you the screenshots of the activities already evaluated. So this is endless. This is wonderful. If you see, it creates multiple choice questions, true or false questions, matching columns, and etc. writing answers. So this is very, very rich, this Quizlet. It's wonderful. If you have never tried it, you need to try it. We have EducaPlay. EducaPlay uh, is a website that uh, allows us to create interactive maps, riddle, fill in the blank, crosswords, dialogue, dictation, jumble work, exactly the same. They are activities that are very easy to create and they are automatically checked and students receive their feedback, okay? Students can try the activities as many times as you tell them and uh, they are a very big variety of them. So you just create your free account as a teacher and you design an activity and you get a game pin you copy the game pin so uh, students can access to the activity that you design, okay? Very easy. Then uh, let's go to Flipgrid. Flipgrid is for videos, but this is very easy to create videos for Flipgrid. You assign an activity for speaking. You pop a question, for example, and students have to answer the question, but instead of writing, they have to uh, speak to the telephone. For example, you say, give me the description of the house of your dreams for homework. Okay. Then instead of having them writing, the house of my dreams, blah, 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 blah they can speak. They can record themselves, uh, like taking a selfie, but with a video, one minute or two minutes. The house of my dreams should include blah, 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 blah. And then they record their videos and they upload the video to the Flipgrid. To the Flipgrid, you just uh, send them a, a, a link. They send them a link that is going to take them to the place where they have to upload the video very easily. They have many opportunities of, of ay, no me gustó como me quedó, again and again. Okay, that this is a good one, then yeah. I upload it and it's not difficult for them. And the collection of videos is not only for you. The collection of videos is for everybody. The, all the videos are going to be displayed on the grid and the students can post and comment on the other students' videos, give likes and or answers. Maybe you want students to be asking questions, okay? Instead of answering questions, they can ask a question and then students have to answer the questions that the students on the video are asking. So you can generate interactions, but asynchronously, asynchronously everybody at the different time whenever they have the time they they get here and it is like a forum but with videos okay very good with flipgrid it's for everybody now we have this um, other recommendation this is padlet padlet is a collaborative and interactive boards where students can post text images links documents videos and voice recordings in different layouts. The same, it can be used with the telephone or it can be used with any gadget, uh, the tablet or an iPad, a, 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 a laptop. So they can go, they can use it very easily and they can share whatsoever you tell them. You have several layouts uh, to choose the disposition of the objects that they are going to upload. Uh, it can be a simple wall, a list, uh, a board, columns. Columns are, for example, here you pop a question and all the answers are going to be down, 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 under, under, and then another question and then another question on the chart. Then here we have this uh, map 
map is for for working maybe geography or this chronology chronology is for the timelines okay here we are uh, this is just an example and here it is a tutorial the advantage of of padlet is that students can upload their homeworks there and everybody is going to see them everybody is going to see this display if you can ask them to share a photograph or a video or an audio of something, and everybody's going to be able to see the collection of the things that they are sharing, okay? So this is very good. So the homeworks are not only for you to see, but they can also interact and type comments on that. Then we have the synchronous interactions. Remember, they are the ones for the, when, when we are together at the same time. You plan, design, active learning activities and around those two elements. You give clear instructions and you keep them short and simple. You can have extended activities with a rubric or checklist and you can do pair work, work group or collaborative work. So it is very important that you keep it with content and social interaction for the times that we are together okay so multitasking is a problem multitasking is a problem research shows that participants often task switch during synchronous instruction and the negative out outcomes are the reduced performance increased time for completing the task and reduced retention so students are in class but they are doing other things because they are online they are answering their mails, they are texting with others, or they are checking their Facebook, and they are supposed to be in class. So to reduce the, this multitasking, we have to keep them active, active, active. Whenever we are together in class, you analyze what people need and deliver exactly that. The, sometimes less is more, remember that. Keep people involved with active learning and design, design activities to make task switching less likely, okay? These are some tools also included in the presentation, like the Quizlet Live that I told you for these competitions. Mentimeter is for creating interactive presentations. You pop questions. Whenever you are in class and if you have a crowded group, even if they are only 12 or 30, it is not the same to wait until the teacher asks you than when teacher pops out a question and all of us have to answer the question with our cell phone. All of us. So all the students have a voice. All the students need to answer and to interact. This is very good. You access to this through Mentimeter.com. You create the teacher account. And um, for us, uh, having access to the presentation is only www.menti.com. The students don't need to download anything. Just type this and a code that you're going to give and the access to the presentation, the interactive presentation. It's similar to a PowerPoint with different slides that you create. Every slide, you're going to choose the different kind of activity that you want to be done that are very different and they are very easy because they are already there. Now you see them all gray, but the results when the students interact, they are very colorful. They are very beautiful. So you generate a code with their presentation and with the numbers of the code, students can access and interact. Very easy to do, very easy to use in class and all the students have to be aware and answering whatsoever you are asking. Another option is Kahoot. Kahoot is the favorite trivia game online that it exists. If you have never done one, I really invite you to create your account for free here in Kahoot.com. And students for playing have to type Kahoot.it. Kahoot.it, you give them the game pin. Here it is the tutorial, very easy to create Kahoots for interacting. For quizzes or for playing, we have these quizzes. Quizzes is also for playing, but it can also be used for quizzes. These quizzes, digital quizzes that are self-checked, automatically checked, so you don't have to check anything. And you can have students, uh, you, you can monitor them when they are answering their quizzes, uh, that they are with the telephone, you are watching them, and then, uh, or even face-to-face. -face. I used this face-to-face I used to arrive to the classroom and tell my students, take out your telephone, we have a quiz. And they had the feedback immediately after they answered the quiz and they had my list. 
uh, updated, okay? Socrative is my favorite. Uh, you could, students just access with Socrative student, and again, you give them the code of the room name that you are going to that they are going to access to the quiz that you generated with three different kind of questions: multiple choice, true or false, and short answer. You have the list in Excel. You have the PDF individually for each student for their grades, and they can know their uh, their uh, grade immediately. There are two sites, teacher students, uh, the te te Socrative teacher and Socrative student, and the tutorial is there. We have, I'm going to finish with uh, this summary of the active learning activities that you can do whenever you are together. Taking activities, collaborative activities, role plays, debates, discussion, breakout rooms, educational games, problem solving, group projects, mind maps, concept maps, timelines, Fair work practice, collaborative writing, peer correction, decision making, and creativity. All these activities are for our class for when we are together. And the other activities can be done then in, uh, in the asynchronous time, OK? We can use Jamboard as a board. Uh, here, I didn't put the tutorial. I will put it. We can use all the tools for Google, for, from Google Workspace that are Google Docs, a collaborative document. Everybody writes at the same time. You just give them the link and everybody answers the exercises, gives examples, answer to situations, create a PowerPoint, an interactive PowerPoint. All of us, each of them choose a slide or each team choose a slide. And then you do collaborative work on the same document. Instead of having 30 documents to check, you are only going to have one uh, the, that we did together in class with feedback, instant feedback that we gave, OK? So these are just some suggestions. Here you have the references. I was very, very fast with the suggestions. Thank you very much for your attention. But as I promised, if you take your telephone, you can scan this QR code. If it's not possible for you, take a picture. Take a, take a screenshot of this uh, slide. There is my email. If you need something, write me. I, I am gladly going to help you with whatever question you have. Or if you want me to email you the presentation in case you cannot download it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Sandra. I don't know if someone would be um, ready with a question for our presenter. All of you have um, um, the, the permission to use your microphones directly if you want. Well, Jesus Payan uh, is uh, saying Excellent presentation, Sandra. Thanks for all the information that you have given us. Oh, thank you very much for being here and for your very kind comments. Tomorrow I am going to be at 12 with another presentation for apps for improving pronunciation. Wonderful. So glad to join us too. We'll be there. Uh, good recommendations, Larissa Herrera Quiroz. Thank, thank you. And uh, Leslie, Leslie Esmeralda Soto, congratulations. Thank you. An excellent and beautiful presentation. Thank you very much. You are very, very kind. Thank you. So I guess that uh, we'll be closing this presentation, thanking you for all the information that you have provided. I'm pretty sure that Tomorrow we will use it, no? Uh, providing we have like uh, the time to know about them. But thank you very much, Sandra. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Alejandra, for your attention here. Thank you. We invite you and everyone to go to the plenary with Federico Navarro. Uh, if you would like, please join. Uh, this plenary with Federico Na Navarro. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sandra.